what a threat intelligence platform is and, um, and the type of offering that we provide. And we're going to spend the majority of our time, a, a good uh, 30, 40 minutes or so, looking directly at the platform itself. So throughout this, there is uh, the option for the attendees to um, ask questions. Um, everyone is currently um, in a mute phase, but if you just uh, have a question, then type it into the um, uh, GoToWebinar, and I'll keep an eye on it and, um, and hopefully answer your questions. Okay, so Threat Connect. Very quick fact about the company. We were formed in 2011 by a group of analysts and data scientists, predominantly um, from the uh, um, military and federal backgrounds in the US, who wanted to define a platform based on the diamond model for intrusion analysis. In fact, we're the authors or co-authors of that particular methodology. So in 2011, they decided to do exactly that. And we've grown from then to around 125, a little bit more employees right now, covering around 16,000, uh, 1,600, sorry, organizations. When we like to bring out a metric here about the number of users, over 13,000 users. And that's very important because we have a service called Collective Analytics. It's crowdsourced or anonymized intelligence. Somewhere in the region of 10 and a half to 11,000 of those individuals are contributing anonymously to the threat intel data available within the platform. Now that's really important because it now gives us context to the data as we'll see in a short while. For strong market penetration into the Fortune 500 and the 100. But most importantly, we provide what's called a threat intelligence platform. Key features are the aggregation, analysis, and actionable response to threat data. But what is threat data? Threat data could come from industry sources, such as the um, information sharing and analysis centers, like the um, FS ISAC or the oil and natural gas ISACs, depending on your current market. It could be open source intelligence feeds coming from fish tank or um, Bambanek, CI Army. The data is being provided in multiple different formats. It could be Stix Taxi based, so Stix being the standard, the format of the data, Taxi being the exchange mechanism. It could be available over HTTP uh, based APIs. It could be web scraping. We could be looking at security blogs and reports. The industry and the open source data can come in various different formats. But you can also provide premium intelligence feeds. So for dark web, we would partner with organizations like Intel 471, Flashpoint, Digital Shadows, and Recorded Future. For social media, we would be partnering with organizations like Digital Shadows and Recorded Future. But of course, we do also provide our own premium threat intelligence feed. The problem here is, is that as we're looking at it, it's just threat data. So we can categorize it as such. Is it an incident? Is it a document that we've loaded into the platform or an email as part of a phishing campaign? Is it a known incident, threat or adversary? What the threat intelligence platform does once it's normalized this data is it then provides context based on your data and the wider analyst community. That means we've got bi-directional integration with the various data lakes in your organization, whether it's Hadoop, Splunk, ArcSight, Logarithm, and so on. Enabling the platform to query those data lakes based on the indicators or to receive information from those systems. We can receive information directly into the API or through email analysis. But what the Threat Intel platform does at that point is begin to action the event. That could be something as simple as workflows, creating a task, assigning individuals, setting an expiration time and an escalation path. 
It could be automation, enrichment of the data, providing geo lookups, historical DNS data, who is data, preventing the users from having to go to multiple external sites in order to gain the information that they need. It may be that we want to enrich the data. Now, enrichment can happen in a number of different ways. But predominantly, we're talking about the gathering of information from external services, such as domain tools, recorded future, virus total. The playbook orchestration capability will enable us to gather that information automatically and then to enrich the existing information in the, in the platform, enabling either a full automation or an interrupted automation of defensive tool integrations. So defensive tool integration, we could be looking at our endpoint protection systems such as Tanium or CrowdStrike. We could be looking at our network-based protection systems, our IDSs, our um, IPSs, you know, people like Palo Alto and Snort and so on. Most importantly is the ability for us to collaborate. One of the biggest problems that a threat intelligence platform solves is the dissemination of information. Information typically gets held in a number of different areas. Emails, SharePoint servers, Excel spreadsheets. What the platform does is it brings all of that information into one common system of record. We can then share that information directly, internally, with our teams, our SOC, our incident response, or our threat intelligence teams. Or what we can do, I do apologize for the beeping in the background, we can then share that externally as well. So that's the core capability of a Threat Intel platform. What Threat Connect enables you to do is to break that down into a product that fits the maturity model for your particular organization. So that means that if you're just starting off on the side of Threat Intel path, We'll be looking at our identifier program, which will enable you to um, aggregate large amounts of information. But then as you progress and mature, we start to add additional functionality, such as the full automation, and most importantly, proactive threat hunting. So that's all I want to talk to you about today on the, um, on the PowerPoint. I like to uh, demonstrate the real platform running rather than slide web. So this is what you would expect to see as a Threat Connect user today. The main dashboard as you log in gives us some statistical idea of the current security within our organization based on the, the available threat data. We have the number of sources. Each source is represented by a circle. The size gives us the volume of uh, indicators and threat data. The location is the average threat and confidence assigned to that particular source. And from that, we can see how many indicators have been derived. Here, we've limited ourselves in this organization to 8 million. And the key categories for the indicators are shown on the screen. As we bring in all of this data, remembering that an individual source, here we have CrowdStrike, can actually have multiple feeds Bambanek is an open source feed is a perfect example with 30 plus feeds behind it. We're able to extract that data and provide the initial categorization of the threat intelligence. So here we've broken that down into threats, incidents, emails, and so on. And in fact, we could start to break that down further based on the individual source. So we can see that we've got a gradual increase in the amount of data coming in from this premium fee provider, CrowdStrike Falcon Intelligence. We can see they're predominantly providing us with threat data. And of the 3 million indicators on this platform that has multiple organizations, we can also see that there has been 2,000 indicators have been observed within someone's organization. Not necessarily mine, but within an organization on the platform at this time. If we compare that to someone smaller, like an open source feed from Fish Tank, well, their average confidence is quite low, but their average threat rating is quite high, 4.83 out of 5 skulls. 
But as you move further down, we can see Dan.me. Well, it's a one-man band, does some great work providing Tor proxy nodes, which is just the information that we get here, nothing else. And in fact, the indicator attributes have been going down with Dan.me. Dan so once I've got um, an idea of statistically where I am within my platform, I can see the current posts going on with the platform. So I can see here that there was an eFish validation sent in by me quite a while ago on the 20th of April, and I only just got around to analyzing that phishing email. Well, that's pretty bad, really, given the current um, activity with ransomware right now. So probably didn't get myself any good stars there. On the left-hand side here, I've got a history, a breadcrumb trail of what I've been looking at recently, when I was looking at it. So yeah, I was looking at Petia. Now, Petia is very high profile right now. So one of the very first things that you might want to do when you come into the platform is not look at the statistical data or your active incidents or your active tasks. It's to just ask it, what do you know about Petia? So we can simply search for it. When we search for it, we can see that it's been tagged in the common community, in the technical blogs and reports. FireEye Eyesight Cybercrime is talking about it. Hybrid Analysis is talking about it. We've got a number of indicators. So straight away, I can start having a look at what other organizations are telling me about this. Well, straight away, Eyesight, who is the source that I followed, knows about two particular indicators. And here we can see the owner, their threat rating, and when this data was added quite some time ago. So the intel's been there all along. I'm just going to take a step back. So I've had one quick way of searching for information. As I scrolled right the way down to the bottom of my screen, I can see that I belong to an organization now that's important because that's data that's private to me and the company I work for. So when I generate my own threat intel, my own incidents, my own campaign data, my own victim data, it is private to me, even on a multi-tenant platform. But I can share that with the communities that I belong to. And I can see all of the different types of intelligence source that are available to me right now. There's no limit to those. And there's virtually no limit to the format that they can can be ingested into the platform. So how would I use a platform like this on a daily basis? Well, one way we've seen already, I'm going to do a search. I might want to do a search on a specific IP address. Or I might simply want to say, well, I haven't been asked to look at anything today. So I'm going to prioritize my work based on the most observed threat in my organization. Well, a threat is a group within the platform. The platform is open and extensible. This is a framework. You can change it to suit your environment. So you can build your own rule-based custom indicators and groups. But I'm going to order this based on just the threats right now. And what I can see is I've got a number of observations. And those observations, I'm just going, I'm very interested in this. I'm going to go straight to the data gives me a breakdown of what LulzSec is. I can see what it's related to based on my tags. I've got a CVE reference. I know that it's to do with domain controllers. It's an advanced persistent threat against my Active Directory. So this is going to be internal to my platform. Most importantly, I'm following it. So I'll get notified without being in the platform by email immediately when there is any change to the association of intelligence and indicators derived from that intelligence. Throughout the platform, we support the use of security labels in order to control the amount of information that is shared externally. Now, two key features that we would use within the platform right now, one of them would be that phishing email that we spoke about earlier on. Here, what we've done is we've taken the body of an email we just emailed it into the platform and it's automatically analyzed it. It's all analyzed all of that valuable data in the header, the recipient and the sender data. And then what we've done is cross-reference that against all of the available intel. 
and we can see that two of the artifacts there have threat scores. When we add them up, gives us a score that is very evil. We can go one higher, and we can go off the scale of evilness. So I'm interested in this, and I start in getting interested in some of the artifacts. So here is an IP address that we highlighted previously. And this is where we start to see that crowdsourced intelligence in play. That crowdsourced intelligence gives us the ability to provide context outside of our organization. It's not been observed in my organization. It's not been marked as a false positive. But I can see it's been marked as a false positive twice. And when was the last time? I can see the two most recent feeds providing um, this information. I can see when it was last observed in somebody's organization. Remember, this is anonymized crowdsourced intelligence. We don't know who the organization was. We just know it was observed. We're applying context to the data. And we can do the same thing for page views, providing you spark lines and so on. But what we're seeing down here is a bit further down, some of that auto enrichment in play. It says it's a prolexic IP. As an analyst, if I know that I'm using prolexic, I don't want to block this because I need those open GRE tunnels. But we're not using prolexic. And so we've used two integrations, the open DNS block list and also the Palo Alto integration, tag the data, and now it's automatically blocked on those systems or from the platform. Now the platform does lots of other cool things such as giving you investigation links, which is a great way of bringing the knowledge of your entire team up to the same level. But where we really want to be is with the automation of all of this data. And that's where our playbooks come into play. Now a playbook can be a very simple process. It can be a very complex process. I have a number of examples that I'm gonna show up here, but I may take a very, very simple orchestration technique and that is for the support of a STIX attachment. STIX data should be delivered via a taxi server. That's what the standard dictates. However, historically and still far too often, the data is um, being shared out via an attachment. Now the problem is, is that it's a very complex um, XML structure to analyze. So what you can do is just simply email that attachment to the platform. And then we're going to send it to the sticks uh, attachment parser and it will analyze it. So how do these playbooks work? We have this triggering capability. What starts off the process? We can connect to a, a link on the platform. We can use a mailbox as I'm using right now. We can do it on a timed basis or on a user action. We could do it based on the creation, modification, or deletion of any of the groups or indicators within the platform. And then once we've, once we've triggered the event, then we need to decide what we want to do. And the playbooks enables you to work within your environment, either with endpoint solutions, enrichment services, um, analysis platforms, network services that are directly supported, through parsers that can interpret the data, through integrations with your SIEM solutions, any interaction within Threat Connect, but most importantly down here, just past the ticketing systems, is through any of the utility applications. What the utility applications enable you to do is with no programming capability whatsoever to integrate with any RESTful API or CLI-based solution. So let's have a quick look at this very simple playbook. What it's going to do is it's simply saying, whenever I receive an email to sticks at threatconnect.eu, I want you to follow the blue line. You'll notice there's a blue and a yellow dot. The yellow dot just tells us what to do when we fail. We're interested in what happens when we pass. So when we pass, I'm going to store the data in the sticks data source. I'm going to extract the mailbox attachment from the previous box. You'll notice as you hover over each one of these small hash symbols, 
it will tell you what the output is that can be used for input on any downstream um, application. So here I'm just using the mailbox attachment. I'm going to save it for context and retrospective analysis within the platform. And I'm going to save it using the file name. But I'm going to use a very specific parser to do this. Now, I've only loaded one into my demo. But the sticks format is a standard. It's not fully ratified of version 2 and 2.1. We're currently running at 1. Actually, that might be wrong. It might have changed recently. But anyway, um, the data can be provided in, in slightly different formats. And as a result, we can build a very specific parser for that particular service. And once we do that, we just activate it. And whenever any data comes in, we can go browse. We can have a look at our very specific source. So I'm going to turn everything off here. And I'm just going to bring up that one source, sticks. And now we can see all of those indicators that we brought into the platform, the threat scores when it was added. We can also see the documents. So the original DHS sticks file that we sent in for the demonstration. So I could download that. I could have a look at it. I could view it in more detail. But what else do we do within the playbook capability? Enrichment is something we spoke about. Well, here, I, well, I'm investigating a specific host. And I want to, I've got the crowdsourced information. I know the threat rating. I know where it's been tagged. So it's come from my 40 gate and it's been tagged as malicious from a wildfire analysis. In fact, here are the reports that, that went off. So I now want to ask an external service, what do they know about it? So I'm just simply going to run the user action here for a playbook. Now this will take just a minute. And as you can see, the platform has come back and said, yeah, I sent you a message and there's actually a risk score associated to this. So let's have a quick look at what that playbook looks like. Again, it's very straightforward. I have an activation based on file, host, mutex, address, or URL. And I follow the blue lines, and you'll notice that they come all the way back up to the same user trigger, user action. By doing that, I can take the output of any of these downstream devices and pass it back up to show me that little screen, that bubble pop-up we saw. So I'm sending a message, it's telling me if my Slack message has succeeded or failed, and what the risk score is. And that's come from this recording and future enrichment capability. Very simple, I'm sending it the action entity, and I'm using my API token. And what it's going to then do in this particular instance is it's going to send me a message in Slack. And in Slack, it's going to send me a lot of information the start, the first source, the most recent fragment, and so on. And it's also going to send me an email. And that email just tells me what the risk score is. Again, very simple. We just put in the text that we're interested in, and then we select the output that we want to see. So I now want to see the most recent title as well. Very simple. I've now activated that, and as it runs, if my Slack is up and running, which is over here, okay, so there is, there it is, let me just get rid of some other things that are on the screen, there we go, so there is the Slack message that was sent to me, so we can see the start date, we can see this, this came in at 2.25 when I ran it just a moment ago. We've got all of that additional data. Now, using the playbook capability, we're not only bringing that data in and sending it off to someone, but I could easily have changed that to add it to a task, build new associations, or in fact, just query the platform and say, well, okay, we know about this host name. We now know about this IP address. Tell me what else the platform knows about it. Or we could do something more complex. We could reach out to our Seam solution, such as Splunk, QRadar, where we have direct 
bidirectional integrations. So the platform has given us the ability to aggregate all of our information. It's provided us with the task management capabilities. It's provided us with a categorization and observation together with the context of that threat data from the wider analyst community. And then it provides us with some additional functionality. So here, for instance, I might simply want to analyze the document. So I'm simply going to upload a file. And I'm going to upload a, a PDF document, right? So this is a news flash, an FBI flash that was sent out last year by Yahoo publicly, even though it's TLP Amber. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this document and we're going to analyze it and cross-reference it against the threat intel data in the platform. Now, as an analyst reading this, I'd immediately start thinking about my um, tools that are being used so I can see Equinetics. I can see that um, uh, that's a scanner. So I can also see user agent strings I'm going to be interested in. I'm going to be looking um, down here at another tool, Directory Buster, some traditional um, uh, IP addresses. Uh, oh, I know it's a scanner because if I ever see these two together, it's a scanner. Fact. So there's a lot of information in here, but if I need to analyze that really quickly, how am I going to go about doing it? Well, we can upload any structured or any unstructured document into the platform and carry out that analysis for you. So I'm just uploading the document now. We are looking for typical obfuscations that you would find in a security report. Changing HXXP to HTTP, changing the square brackets around a dotted decimal, decimal notation, removing them. And once I've done that, we can simply analyze it. We're not importing this into the platform. We're not doing anything with it. We're just simply quickly analyzing it. So here we can see it's picked up a number of IP addresses. They're known by CrowdStrike. CrowdStrike has, targeted them as, has tagged them as suspicious. And we can see a little bit more information, that metadata is surrounding it. We can see the Department of Homeland Security has picked up on this particular artifact. We can see the documents that it's associated with. So I can open those in a new tab or I can dive directly into or pivot into that data. And as I pivot in, I get those valuable crowdsourced analytics. I can see all of the known sources of data. I can build up my own um, intelligence looking at the historic domains querying those external services and then bringing in the results into the platform. So there's no associations at that point. So the platform gives you the ability to carry out a quick analysis of any structured or unstructured non-binary document. It enables you to import those into the platform. And when you import them in, you can then honor the TLP levels because it will ask you to set it. And you can set it as TLP Amber, and then that way you'll know that you're not supposed to share it. We have wizard-based creation of indicators and groups within the platform. One of the key drivers behind Threat Connect is to, to reduce the number of clicks it takes for an analyst to find the information they're looking for or to carry out a very specific task. And so the wizards are going to enable you to do that. We provide you with the visualization capabilities and integration with third party solutions, detailed browsing capabilities, and most importantly, that integration with those external solutions. So those external solutions, I have one here, which is Splunk. This is a direct bi-directional integration. And here what we're doing is Splunk is pulling indicators filtered from the Threat Intel platform directly into its internal system. And then we are normalizing them across the common information model or running custom searches. 
and build in data model searches for correlation. When we do that, the platform then starts to tell us what's going on. So here, for instance, we can see that we've had indications over the last 30 days. Well, I'm interested more in the last seven days. Yeah, we've had um, 13 address hits in the last seven days. We can see what those address hits are, the threat rating, the tags that, they, that were associated with them, and that full event data. From a SOC perspective, I may want to use uh, Splunk as my core platform. And if I'm going to be doing that, I'm probably going to be looking at my event triage. So my event triage is giving me hits that are correlations between the two platforms. And I can see what those indicators are, where the owners of the traffic came from, from Threat Connect's perspective, and where the source of the traffic was within our organization. So from here, I can then either jump directly to the Threat Connect platform to get more information. I can mark it as a false positive, which will mark it directly in the Threat Connect platform as a false positive. I can whitelist it, I can apply all my filters and so on. Over time, what we'll be able to do is start searching for individual indicators. So here we could take this particular IP. We could now start doing lookups on it. Get a little junk at the beginning. And we can say, well, actually, it's not been found. Uh, that's because this result is only going back over a short time period. So I'd need to extend the, uh, open the search and extend it. So it's only looking in the last 15 minutes here. I could actually just bring up all of that information that I'm interested in. So seeing where all the file data is coming from. This is a great way of, of uh, determining whether or not your feed is actually providing you with more information or reliable information. So let's try that with addresses. No results. That's curious. So there should be a lot of data there. I'm not totally sure why that's uh, that's not coming up right now. So I do apologize for that. Oh, it's looking in the last 15 minutes. That's why. Um, so there hasn't been any new data coming in the last 15 minutes. So I need to change those searches so that they come up a little bit higher and it will start to populate all this information over that out for you. What it does enable you to do is begin to map model against the diamond dashboard. So the diamond model of intrusion analysis provides us with an adversary a campaign, uh, sorry, a capability, a victim and the infrastructure that they're using. So here we can look at the various different data models that are available. We can look at the owners. We can then search based on very specific results and start to populate out this information. So not the greatest demonstration of my Splunk integration there. I do apologize uh, for that. Um, however, what we can see there is that there is a direct bi-directional in uh, integration. We are pulling that data directly in. And we can, if we use in Splunk, let's say for instance with Splunk Enterprise Security, you'll be able to directly query from the raw event, the Threat Connect platform to find out what that system knows about it. So we've covered a lot of information. What I'd like to do is take a break there, um, open up to any questions that anyone may have in regards to anything that I've been through or any uh, additional information that they're interested in. Uh, what I need to do is just take everyone off of mute. Um, Muted. He says. So, sorry, just having a little technical problem. Uh, okay, question. So I do have a question here. If you can pass the presenter, oh no, maybe slightly. Okay, do I guess. So, uh, I guess. So, how do I get everyone off mute? Okay, I'm going to try that again. Uh, I'm going to 
Hey, Chris, it looks like uh, our friend uh, Mark from ISOC 24 has uh, a few slides um, to present. Okay, so what I'll do is I will um, hand over to Mark at ISOC 24, who's got some slides, and then we'll answer any questions as they uh, come up. Yeah, I had a conclusion prepared, so that's after your session. Chris? Yes, Mark. Yeah, I had a conclusion prepared after the session for the two sessions we've had. So continue, please, with your questions. Are there any questions from the audience on anything that um, uh, has been said so far? No questions? No response, Chris? Uh, there's no questions coming in at the moment, Mark. I'm just seeing if there's a way that I can get everyone off of mute so that they can um, Muted. Uh, ask verbally. So let me see if I can get them off mute. So it doesn't look like I can uh, get people off of mute there, Mark. Um, there's no questions coming in. So what I'll, um, uh, do you want to uh, present now, Mark, or would you like me to um, cover more from the Thread Intel platform? I seem to get unmuted and muted every time, Chris. But uh, yeah, since there are no questions, I would like to go to the closing part, unless you would like to add things. No, that's cool. I mean, uh, the, you know, we there's quite a lot of things that you can cover on the Threat Intel platform. And um, if we want to go on a deep dive, then I'm more than happy to do that for a specific um, area. But I think we've covered the, the core functionality there in that presentation. Okay, good to hear. I would like to thank you then again, Chris, for uh, for providing the presentation. Yes, I was uh, as I was uh, starting in the uh, beginning of the presentation afternoon, uh, the virtual afternoon session we organized. We had a virtual afternoon session with, together with uh, with Blue Leaf and Track Connect. Basically, what uh, what 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 we would like what we would uh, would like to do in these sessions is to. Uh, to inform our customers and interested parties via two different webinars about the experiences in the field of cyber threat intelligence with uh, on the one side the threat feeds and with the on the other side the threat intelligence platform so basically uh, integration with current security measures was uh, one of the subjects in one of the sessions and also next to the differences between information and intelligence uh, also state which uh, sources are available uh, and, and are reliable Will also be uh, would also be explained further. So basically, uh, we we come to the point that that has happened. Uh, uh, normally, looking at the functional demands we have in our portfolio, uh, we today we discuss the intelligence-driven security solutions and also cyber threat intelligence feeds. But basically, uh, we uh, we have a as ISO 24, we have a portfolio of a couple of solutions that can work with each other. They can enhance each other, for that matter. And uh, uh, if, if you look at the overall portfolio, the threat intelligence platform and the threat intelligence feeds fit perfectly at, at organizations who already have their posture uh, uh, aligned or are looking at uh, 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 more extension of that uh, posture in that matter. 
So think about vulnerability management uh, solutions that can add to the threat intelligence platform, but also uh, information from your firewalls, your endpoint protection, your malware protection uh, uh, investment, and actually, of course, also your auditing and governance that can be combined. So basically, uh, I would like to thank uh, every speaker for this afternoon. And uh, if you have any questions, just point to uh, the email addresses below. We've recorded the sessions, so we will start sending out the recording uh, location. And we, would look, we look forward to uh, meeting up with you again to discuss other subjects surrounding information security. And I would like to conclude with, uh, well, the sentence, stay in control. Thank you very much and have a nice afternoon.